The highly anticipated clash between the two heavyweight titans Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois is finally over, and here are the pros' shocking reactions. What would you think, man? Crazy it result, a, right? It was, it was a great fight. I think Joshua, you know, got overconfident. Yeah. You know, he hurt him. He, he hurt him with a shot and went for the kill, but he forgot about his defense and forgot, you know what I mean, about the fundamentals. Mm. What would you like to see each do? Where does Joshua go from here, bud? Where does Dubois go from here? I don't know. I don't know. I got belief in him, and I, and I said from the beginning, the tactics of his fight was to put the other guy on the back foot. And it was, about the back, it was going to be about who, who can control the fight with a jab. Daniel did that from the first bell, and that was the key to it. And as I said, you know, in plenty of interviews with him, he said, the fighter that goes on the back foot will get beat. Yeah, you did say who lands the first shot, and Daniel really was the boss from the first round for him. He was, but he had to end. You know, he had to go. And, he had to go. And, he had to go and stamp his authority on the fight, and that's what he did. Terence, was it a shock what you watched? No, not at all. I, I always stated that the better uh, man was going to win the day, and Dubois was the better man. He capitalized on uh, Joshua faults, and he won the fight. Round one, obviously, Joshua floored in that first round. Your thoughts on that? Hey, he came to fight, and you can see it in his eyes. He wasn't leaving out the ring without that victory. What'd you think, Ricky? Crazy result, right? Crazy unbelievable, result. unbelievable. Right? What went wrong for Just AJ, your fall. opinion? I what? said to Joe Cordine, the next way I said he was, he needs to throw some backhands. He threw a backhand and then, would have then the minute the fight was over, unbelievable. Wow. So in your opinion, where does AJ go from here, Ricky? Where do you want I'd, to take I'd like to see him retire as a friend. Yeah? I don't want to, you know, he's, he's been a two-time world champion. Mm -hmm. He's in the country proud. I'd like to see him uh, hang his gloves up and enjoy his retirement. Mm. It's heavyweight boxing, boys. It happens. Shit happens. You get knocked spark out. It could have been me. It could have been you. It could have been anybody. In the heavyweight division, it's what happens. Oh, One right. punch away from what? being smashed, knocked out. What went wrong, you feel, with the game plan that Joshua had in that I first I think round? what went wrong is what always goes wrong in heavyweight boxing. Good right hand on the end of the chin. No, I'm not surprised. Who we boxing, man? What do you make of Daniel Dupuyer and how he's got on the past few years? He's, he's really sort of... done really good. Just for Becky, thank you so much. Well, right. well, Pick this back up. Obviously, Dubois's been through a lot in his career. When you see a story like this, obviously, you've been through your ups and downs as well. Just heavyweight boxing. Were you, did it, none, of, none of this surprise you tonight at all? No, no, no. It's heavyweight boxing. you got two guys who can punch. They're massive punches. So, you know, these things can happen. What you guys think? That was insane. Yeah, it was insane, mate. You know, once it got caught, mate, from the early doors, we said, we said whoever learned the first punch, they're going to win. And he done that, mate. And he done that. And he done it well. Connor, what do you think? Crazy. Crazy. Connor, my guy. Yes, bro. Well, man. What went wrong for AJ? I'm not sure I stayed for him and it's team to, to find out, but that was wild. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? But listen, when you've got big punches in there, anything can happen. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? It's just one of them things, man. Shane Tyson, shocking result. What do you guys think? Very good, uh, very good fight. Uh, Joshua again went up in my book again, even to see seeing what, he, what, what took place. He went out in his shield. Mm. You can't ask anything else about that. Devin, <laughs> what do you think of the fight, bro? Man, it was, it's, a boxing, it's, it's, it's the boxing game, it's the fight game, it's the heavyweight division, anything can happen. What went wrong for AJ, man? Man, one punch can change the whole night. Yeah. Come on, Ben. You know, uh, just overall, how'd you feel Dubois fought in there? The, he fought a good he, fight, he won. Yeah. He, and he, 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 he knocked him out when he was hurt, so he fought a good fight. Does he uh, beat... Usyk in a rematch as he beats Fury if they were to fight. Wait, Dubai fought Usyk? Yeah. Oh, the, yeah, the with the low blow. The low yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, it's the, it's the heavyweight division, man. Them guys can all fight each other, beat each other. One can beat one, the other one can't can beat. It's just, that's just the heavyweight division for you. You know, behind the scenes, the work with my dad, you know, um, you know, all my family and, you know, my, my strong team here, they've helped me get through this. So, God bless you all, man.
I'm lost for words. Daniel said he was going to knock him out in the sixth round. He did it in the fifth. And I'm so happy because I want to go to bed. <laughs> Stan. Stan, you said it was... <laughs> And you said it was your son. You said it was your son's destiny. This. This is his destiny. That's why we came out with Daniel in the Lions. Den. That's why we came out with Daniel in the Lions. Den. I'm a great believer. I'm a, I'm a great believer. I've got a lot of faith, and I knew tonight was Daniel's night. He was so dominant. Because everyone was saying he was gonna get knocked out, and now they all got quiet and left the venue in ten seconds. Opponent, <laughs> but. Uh... Credit to him and his team. We rolled the dice at success and we come up short. But I want to say, everyone in Wembley, I appreciate you coming out this evening. You know I'm pissed. You know I'm ready to kick off in the ring, but I'm going to keep my cool and keep very professional and give the respect to my opponent. I'm sure he'll exercise that rematch clause. I mean, I think that's a, a given, but he'll need a rest. And it's a dangerous fight. This guy's growing in confidence all the time. But he'll believe he can hurt Dubois. He'll believe he can beat him. But full credit to Daniel Dubois. He deserves all the credit tonight. It was a great performance from Daniel. Before the highly anticipated bout, the boxing community had a very different view on the fight. Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois were fed up of questions about their sparring session that they mocked the whole idea of sparring and declared that the fight night will reveal the truth. There you go, Daniel. Well, we right? sparred hundreds of rounds, didn't you, you cracked him, Daniel. So you, you know you can hurt. It's sparring. Now we're fighting. It's different, you know? Think it's different? Ready to go. Think it's move on now. You can move on now. Former heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis gave his thoughts on the Daniel Dubois versus Anthony Joshua bout. He said that Anthony may be thinking that Dubois can't take his place because Joshua has been around for so long, but the reality may be opposite. Yeah, I mean, I've been there, done that, and I know what it takes when it comes to um, British fights because, you know, even the guy that you think that's going to win may not win because the other guy's been sitting in the background and, you know, he wants to that glory as well. He wants to be in that position and he feel he may feel that, uh, you know, nobody's looking at me and, um, you know, they're looking at the number one guy and this and that. So, you know, there's a lot of things going through each boxer's mind. And, you know, if you look at Anthony Joshua, he's probably thinking, oh, this guy's trying to take my space. You know, I've always been here. You know, he can't take my space. He's my old sparring partner. So, I'm, you know, I know about him already. Lennox added that Joshua has a significant advantage over Dubois, given that he has fought Oleksandr Usyk. Lennox commented, Joshua's advantage is his experience. The fact he's been in against Oleksandr Usyk twice, he's boxed boxed over in America, big stadium events, and has high-profile trainers. However, Lewis wasn't counting Dubois out completely. Highlighting Dubois' knockdown that was ruled a low blow, Lewis added, This is something not a lot of people can do. After a bit of speculating about the matchup, I think it can go either way because both of them have a good shot. Pro boxer Chris Eubank Jr. thought that Anthony Joshua was the favorite in the upcoming bout, but also believed that one jab can change the whole game, and Dubois might just do that. I would imagine so, yes. He is a favorite, you know, from what I can see, just in terms of, you know, his ability, his experience, his attributes. I think he outguns Dubois in a lot of, in, in most areas. Um, but the exciting thing about heavyweight boxing is that one punch can change it all. One punch can end it all. Um, so even though I do believe on a skill level and an IQ level, on an experience level, AJ has, him outgunned, um, all that can change in a split second with these big boys. You know, they land a shot and that's it. It doesn't matter how, how many levels above you are. If you get hit on the chin, you're going to go down. Before their fight, Daniel Dubois confronted Anthony Joshua in an interview session. Joshua got annoyed when Dubois seemed too eager to fight. Anthony expected Dubois to act more submissive and show him more respect, but Dubois didn't act the way Joshua wanted. So Anthony Joshua threatened to attack him with a chair. Dubois really looked like he was ready to fight Joshua right then and there, and he wasn't joking around. Do you want to go down this on this chair across your face? Don't, don't disrespect No, you can't intimidate me. Don't disrespect me. You can't intimidate me. Don't disrespect me. You can't intimidate me. Daniel, don't disrespect me. Who do you think me. you are? Daniel, don't disrespect me. You can't put this <laughs> No, 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 no,
Former trainer turned pundit Teddy Atlas had plenty of praise for Dubois after his recent showings. Atlas predicted the fight beforehand and said, Dubois was tremendous in his last fight with Hergovic. He overcame, he broke him down, he evaporated him on a hot summer day with his toughness, his physicality. He's strong, a puncher. He can impose his will now. If he hits Joshua, he could hurt him. Meanwhile, boxing promoter Eddie Hearn highlighted that both Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois are in peak form and showing impressive improvements. He anticipated a fiercely competitive fight, stressing that Joshua must be strategic against Dubois' aggressive style. This is this is not a tactically a tough fight for Anthony Joshua. It's just a very dangerous fight. You know, unpicking the flaws of Daniel Dubois and setting traps against him is not going to be the problem. It's going to be what's coming back, and it's about being smart and being like a sniper in there and taking this guy out because Dubois is very active. He's got great volume to his work. And I was saying to so Frank, it's going to be really interesting to see how they both come out. Because I don't know if Dubois can control his emotions in there on Saturday. And if he doesn't, he'll come out like he did against Hergovic. And if he does, one way or the other, this will be over inside three rounds. And it could just be an almighty shootout. Or they could be a little bit more cautious. They're definitely going to be conscious of each other's power. Meanwhile, Joe Joyce has fought Daniel Dubois, and he has spent plenty of time sparring with Anthony Joshua. Joe declared his own version of the sparring session between Anthony Joshua and Daniel Dubois. Joyce said that Dubois hits really hard when he wants to. I wasn't there, but I did see a clip of it um, on, on someone's phone before. But, right, mate, mate, okay. Dubois hits hard, full stop. Like, if, you, if you're there to be hit and he lands on you, then you'll get his... He, to, yeah, he can hit. Joe Joyce further declared his remarks on both fighters, raw power Dubois, but Joshua has that power too, it's maybe a bit quicker. I remember him putting the hands together a bit more. Dubois is improving as well, also we're going to have to see on the night. On the other hand, Anthony Joshua said that two years ago, he didn't think that he could sell out an entire Wembley Stadium. Ahead of his clash with Dubois, Anthony declared that he will become the undisputed champion. I, I, I don't know about selling out Wembley, but I think that I could have had a good chance at becoming champion again. Yeah, I would have been like, yeah, I could do that. If I really wanted deep down in my heart, I could definitely do it. But Wembley, that's a, that's a big blessing. Shout out to everyone that's coming. Um, Anthony Joshua is coming off a four-fight winning streak right up to face Daniel Dubois. Joshua commented, I think I'm gifted with an ability to fight and compete. In boxing, you're able to read certain tendencies. You're able to read your opponent, so I can always have an eye for that. But there's a supreme level that you can take it to, and it's happened over the past eight or ten months. I've really honed in on those skills. Anthony shared that people are really underestimating him, but they will know who the real winner is on Saturday. Meanwhile, Daniel Dubois said that everyone wants the underdog to win, and he feels like the underdog in the fight against Anthony Joshua. Dubois planned on making the fight night something that will be remembered. Definitely still have that mindset. I'm still, I feel like that is the case, but um, you know, every do, everyone wants to see the underdog come through it and come out on top. So um, I'm the underdog and I love playing that role. And um, yeah, let's make it another night to remember. Daniel Dubois slammed Anthony Joshua's face on his birthday cake and disrespected his opponent once again. Happy birthday to you. Anthony Joshua claps back at Daniel Dubois for smashing his face on a cake and said that his team respects other fighters and they focus on the fight ahead, not the silly acting during the fight week. Uh, funny, and, but he should focus on himself. All that stuff is... Uh, Small distractions in my opinion. With my team, we don't do interviews. We keep our head down. We don't um, indulge in, we don't disres not disrespect, but we don't, uh, what, do, what do you call it? Put funny stuff out about our opponents during fight week. None of my team go on online talking about our opponent. We're very respectful. And we focus, that's why we're focusing on ourselves, because we respect our opponent. Meanwhile, Ben Shalom stated that he was a huge fan of Anthony Joshua. He thought that Joshua was a great athlete and felt very confident about the fight. He mentioned that Dubois had improved in the last 12 months, but believed that Joshua was still too much for him. Um, 
I think Anthony Joshua, I'm a massive fan of him, I have to say. Always have been. So great to see him back, great to see him looking so confident. Daniel's had a great 12 months, but for me, Anthony should be far too much. I really believe he's, he's an elite, elite heavyweight. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua declared that he was ready to face Daniel Dubois and planned on using his ring IQ to dance around his opponent. I've given them the respect they deserve in my preparation. I've given the fans that are coming out the respect because I've worked hard and um, I'm praying like, God willing, it all comes together, man. Do you know what I'm saying? I've got the fighting spirit, I've got the boxing IQ, and I'm gonna go in there and I'm gonna dance, baby. I'm gonna dance, let's go. Boxing trainer Robert Garcia recognized the strengths that Anthony Joshua brought to the ring and believed his former fighter had the potential to become heavyweight champion. It is a close fight because we can't underestimate a world champion. Nobody can, nobody should. But personally, I think the activity, the confidence he built in his last four fights, it's enough to turn it into an easy fight. I think Joshua wins comfortably, and I think he wins by knockout. Otto Wallen has faced Anthony Joshua before and believed that Daniel Dubois would encounter a difficult challenge. Wallen mentioned that if Dubois employed the same aggressive style he used against Philip Hergovich, he might run into issues. However, he also noted that adopting a more defensive approach could enhance Dubois' chances in the fight. I, th I, think, I think that if Dubois comes out like he did in his last fight, got, got hit with a lot of shots from Hergovich, if, if he does the same with Joshua, I think it's going to be an early night. I think that Joshua is going to win within the first five or six rounds, if that happens. But if Dubois comes out with a little better defense and can hit Joshua with a few good shots, maybe make him doubt himself, then I think it could turn into a good fight. But it all depends if, if uh, you know, we all seen Joshua's power uh, with Ngano. So if, if he hits Dubois with those kind of shots and keeps hitting him, then it's going to be an early night. But I think that Dubois is a good fighter. So uh, if, you know, if he can come out and land a few shots himself, then it could turn into a good fight. During the pre-fight press conference, Joshua and Daniel were both respectful of each other and declared war while maintaining a peaceful attitude. Dubois said, let's go. Can't wait to complete the resurrection of my career by making history. Be it points or knockout, I will do what it takes to beat him. On the other hand, Anthony Joshua responded, a blessing to be back at Wembley to prove I'm in supreme condition mentally and physically. I will win by breaking him down. Boxing manager Shane Watson thought that Dubois didn't even stand a chance against Joshua's devastating stating right hands. He said that Daniel's performance against Hergovich was poor and he will have a tough time against Anthony. I think it's a bit of another level. Furthermore, Duke McKenzie backed Daniel Dubois to cause a huge upset when he faced Anthony Joshua, a fighter who won world titles in three weight classes, liked what he had seen from Dubois, but he picked Joshua to retain his title. I don't know if he's the people's favorite and I don't know if he's the bookie's favorite and I don't gamble, but if I did right now and I had to pick one person to win this particular fight, I'm slightly leaning towards Dubois. Bois. He further added, when you look at the last several fights that they've had, AJ's had the softer ride in. Dubois has the more natural athleticism about him. He's more loose than AJ. He would have done his research on AJ and know how to beat him. Trainer Shane McGuigan believed Daniel had the capability to knock out any heavyweight in the world at that moment. He emphasized that Daniel's speed and balance could be key factors in securing a victory. Heavyweight out. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua fought against Francis Ngannou and won in the second round. Francis gave his thoughts on the bout. Even though Joshua lost against Usyk twice and Dubois fought Usyk and almost knocked him down and almost won, I would still give this to Joshua. Ben Davison emphasized that, if he was being honest, proper preparation and fighting the right way could lead to AJ knocking Dubois out early. He noted that this was not a slight against Daniel, whom he viewed as a good fighter, but he believed Dubois' weaknesses and strengths both played into Joshua's hands. Davison concluded that it was not a favorable style matchup for Dubois, regardless of timing. Preparing properly and going about the fight the right way because we, we do and we treat him with respect. I wouldn't be shocked if AJ knocked him out quite early. I wouldn't be shocked. I just, and that's no disrespect, Daniel. I think he's a good fighter. Just being honest, I think he sh his weaknesses play into Anthony Joshua's hands. But more importantly, I actually think his strengths play into AJ's hands as well. So I just think it's, it's a, it's a, it's a not a good style matchup. So people going on about is it the right time, right time, forget the time. I just think it's not a good style matchup for Daniel Dubois. Eddie Hearn had respect for Daniel Dubois and said that he is a huge lump of meat that can really hit hard. Eddie shunned all the rumors of Daniel's dad splitting up with the team and said that the fight night will be really dangerous for both Joshua and Daniel. Because he's a big lump that can punch and he's dangerous. And he's not, you know, he's going to make a load of mistakes, but he's going to be 
really dangerous. So it's going to come down to who's smarter, but particularly who lands first and who can hurt the other one first. If he had no trainer, if it was just him and his dad, I think it would be the same fight, the same result. There has been a bit of animosity between Joshua and Dubois since the announcement of the fight, a friction Hearn believes would motivate his fighter to secure another emphatic title win. Eddie further added on the motivation that Joshua has to knock out the kid, Joshua is always motivated, but when that happens, there's just a little bit more spring in the step and spine cap, and this is a chance for AJ to become three-time world heavyweight champion on such a massive night. On the other hand, Frank Warren expressed that he had as much confidence in Daniel Dubois as Eddie Hearn had in Anthony Joshua. Warren acknowledged that the phrase, styles make fights, was often seen as a cliché, but he believed everything changed once the bell rang. He was certain that Dubois would successfully defend his title against Joshua on fight night. Eddie's very confident of, of Anthony, and I'm very confident of Daniel. We'll find out on the night. You know, styles make fights, all those clichés, everything. But you know what? Once that bell goes, they're going to get down on it and... And it will be exciting, there's no doubt about it. They ain't gonna be fiddling around, trying to feel each other out. This is, this is gonna be warfare in the ring. That's what it will be. This is gonna be a great, great fight. And this man here is gonna be successful in defending his title. That is how I see the fight. And nobody's going to change my opinion on that. That's how I see it, and I believe he'll do it. Joshua had momentum on his side, winning four back-to-back -back bouts after his loss to Usyk, feeling super confident to headline his sixth main event at the venue. When asked about the fight, Joshua simply said, It's good to be back. I'm ready to rumble and remind everyone what I'm capable of. Meanwhile, Anthony Joshua's next possible opponent, Tyson Fury's father, John Fury, has shared his admiration and respect towards his son's biggest foe, Anthony Joshua. I've always liked Anthony Joshua. I've never said anything wrong about him. He showed me respect. He was lovely, and it was heartfelt. I've got nothing but admiration and respect for Anthony Joshua. It was a great moment for me. Anthony Joshua had respect for John Fury as well, since he said, he is a great fighter, Olympic gold medalist. He's done a lot for boxing, let's not forget that. And he's a good fighter, and he will be a world champion again. But I couldn't get over how big he was. The man is a unit. He's always been a nice guy, respectful man. I have nothing bad to say about John. John's an older guy. Tyson Fury was backing Daniel Dubois in his fight against Anthony Joshua. In addition to Fury's support for Daniel, Joshua explained that it doesn't matter who supports him or not. Anthony declared that Dubois is a good fighter, so that is why people are supporting him. Yeah, he's a good fighter, Dubois. So 50-50, I think certain people are going to back him, certain people are going to back me. And uh, I can't take anything from it, you know what I mean? I just got to make sure that I focus on myself and um, prove myself right. So, what's your take on this week's showdown? Did Anthony Joshua make his mark or was Daniel too strong? We would love to hear your thoughts. Let us know in the comments section below and subscribe for more content like this.